Questa è la ragione per la quale oggi noi facciamo tanta paura. Questa è la ragione per la quale oggi questo appuntamento fa tanta paura. Perché noi non vogliamo essere dei numeri, noi siamo qui per dire che noi non siamo dei numeri, noi difenderemo il valore della persona umana, di ogni singola persona umana, perché ognuno di noi ha un codice genetico unico e irripetibile. E questo piaccia o no a del sacro. Lo difenderemo, difenderemo Dio, la patria e la famiglia, che fanno tanto schifo a qualcuno. Lo faremo per difendere la nostra libertà, perché noi non saremo mai schiavi e semplici consumatori in balia della speculazione finanziaria. Ecco la nostra missione, ecco perché oggi sono venuta qui. Scrive... That was the new Prime Minister of Italy, Giorgia Maloney, on the world stage following her election victory. Mm. And I'm seeing a lot of reaction to that speech online, making it sound like that was basically a Nazi speech, which is not more what Mussol I heard I think more in Mussolini, right, more than, Mussolini. Than, than Nazi. Yeah. Sorry, I still had Hillary Clinton on the mind. Yeah, right, um, yeah. Look, I get, I, I gather from doing a little research here, that she is part of a political party that is well to the right, that has origins in Italian fascism, although she claims and others in the party claim it has shed all those influences. It is well to the right and even to the right of, you know, the other populist right parties, right. Uh, Silvio Berlusconi's and the other one, that have now formed a ruling coalition, these, these uh, conservative parties. Hers fine, I accept uh, that this is what we're being told, is more outside the mainstream, it is akin to uh, Marine Le Pen right. in France or Viktor Orban in, um, in uh, Hungary. Hungary. So fine, I'm sure there are a lot of policies that she has that I would disagree with on immigration, on other issues. But I, I mean, what did you make of it? I, I don't think it, from what I was, I mean, she was, she was saying, I mean, she's giving political speech type things about how we're going to defend our people, we're going to defend liberty. You know, she was, she was signaling to some kind of, uh, you know, opposition to sort of progressive or woke ideas about gender, et cetera. Not, I, I don't see where that's like wildly outside of any kind of mainstream. In fact, actually most, not just far right people, but most mainstream people actually also, you know, are not totally on board with what progressives are doing on gender and other subjects, so. Yeah, I mean, I think the she's definitely speaking to a uh, kind of code for, you know, we'll defend the country, we'll defend God. Uh, I think that that in, in countries like Italy and Spain are often affili affiliated with neo-fascists, uh, or in the case of, well, actually, in both of them, uh, actual fascist parties. Yeah, we want to be careful, right? It's not, it's only, you know, 70-ish years ago now, 80-ish years ago, where the fascism was a real presence yeah, in Europe, in, in these countries. Um, yeah. yeah, so totally right to be wary of it. Right. But, um, but there's also a danger of calling everything sure. fascism, which I know you know about because you talk about that right. too, um, especially when they're making speeches that are, are those are remarks that I, to my ears fit in with even the political moment, the political right here and in other places, which is objecting to, um, you know, to, again, gender, wokeness, et cetera. So I, I don't know. I, it, there's the danger of overreaching and saying, oh, yeah, you know, fascism has won. This is chill. Like, that's the, like, the tweet associated with this video that came across our, yeah. our feed was something like, oh, my gosh, this is chilling. Like, wow. Which, I don't know, is it? <laughs> I mean, I think she, apparently she uh, joined the party that was founded right after Mussolini's original party was banned in 45. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's considered by many uh, to be a neo-fascist party. The, it's called the Italian Social Movement. Um, I think that, you know, we should, I would love to have on a guest who's more of an expert in this field. Uh, certainly a lot of people who I respect are saying that she's a neo-fascist, but uh, I'd want to look more into her, her policies. And when she, now when she, I guess, are, are people saying that, you know, when she's talking about uh, f uh, financial speculation, yeah. is that like supposed to be code for... Jewish, the Jews, the, Jews. the globalists. That, I think obviously so. That yeah, is I think that that's another way that she's signaling. Yeah, and apparently she's incredibly anti-immigrant, and similar yeah. to the way that uh, that uh, Le Pen is also. Yeah, but she so. later in her her remarks, we only played the first clip yeah. of that, right? She's talking about it was with specific respect to consumerism. That look, I understand how you could read it as uh, anti-Semitic, uh, but it it actually honestly there was even something almost left wing about the way she was phrasing it about the you know the hold that corporations 
have over us, uh, you know, speaking to some of the tech concerns that sure, both people right. on the left and the right have in the U.S. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to whitewash this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, maybe they are just as bad as they're being described right. on social media. Uh, I, I accept that this person seems is well to the right of the other political parties. And again, I probably disagree with a lot of these policies, including on you know consumerism, which I don't actually. Right. I I'm the libertarian. I'm the right, one saying right. no. I, this, what, stuff makes yeah, us better. Yeah, what are you talking away, about? Yeah. Consume away. Right. So I'm. I'm not saying. This I mean, but I think we see that as sympathy to her. But. When you said it sounds left, I mean, I think that's what a lot of right-wing populism does, right? It kind of has a similar critique, but then the direction it goes in is different. So they're like, yeah, there's capitalism and speculation and consumerism, and the answer is to, and then the left will say, you know, uh, go after greed or about uh, capitalism, and then the right is like. And the bet that, which is why we have to close our borders. Right. You know. Right. So. Fascism. You know, despite being a, a, a sort of a reality, the fascists would describe themselves as you know they're anti-communists. Yeah. They don't. They hate communists. Uh, but then fascist policies end up being a sort of management of the economy um, in, in a. It, it, not in not in the same way that communism right. manages the economy, but it's still a very managed yeah. economy, like with high levels of state control. Usually, not state ownership right. of the means of production of, of the firms, but a high degree of centralization and telling uh, firms what to do, which uh, which yeah. deeply offensive to me right. as a libertarian. I mean, there's they're they're kind of like class class virtue signaling. I would say fascists because mm -hmm. I don't think that they actually control corporations as much as they claim to. Right. Um, but uh, what's interesting is that you know she's definitely, as we were saying, she's definitely signaling. And I think that t people of Italy understand this. They read it this way because of the way that like Mussolini presented himself and the discourse around the family and God and the country. Um, those things are are like signal. And just, I mean, I, I know. But there are things that, like, every politician signals, right? Yeah. In, in the U.S. Got, yeah. It actually, yes. But um, you, have to, you have to cross a pretty far left line before the politician stops, like, talking about God. About God, yeah, right? In yeah. the U.S. context. Right. But, there's, but it is a little different in Europe because yeah. they are, I mean, it's a complicated discussion. In some ways, they're, they have more of a separation of church and state. In some ways, they have less of a separation of church and state. It depends. Yeah. It is. It is. It is weird. Yeah, but let's see if she actually does. Like so many people who signal being populist, let's see if she actually does anything about finance. Right. Well, yeah. she is, by the way, the first Italian uh, female prime minister. Girl power, girl boss energy. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know why yeah. are why are uh, why are mainstream glass, Democrats even know, upset? It's a girl power. The glass ceiling. Uh, media is smearing her. Yes, as I said, as far right Mussolini. Let's watch that. Fiery 45-year-old is comfortable with some of the hallmarks of Italian fascism, like this motto. God, fatherland, and family. And that's clearly a post-fascist party um, with a post-fascist agenda. Uh, Irene Caratelli is a political scientist at Rome's American University. It has the flame uh, yeah, and the flame. symbol of the political party that goes back to the idea of the flame on the grave of Mussolini. The same flame is on Mussolini's grave? Yes. Now it's a historic election also because Georgia Maloney would be Italy's first ever female prime minister. An important glass ceiling, but one that's been overshadowed by her politics. Chris Livesey, CBS News, Rome. It's interesting, apparently over the years, people have encouraged her to get rid of the flame and she refuses to. Hmm. Yeah, look, bad optics, lady. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I don't. You don't have to get rid of the pro God language, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe a different flame. Yeah. They could adopt one of our. Obviously, there's, you know, the like flame is a the Statue of Liberty yeah. fire beacon is an right. icon for sure she'd liberty love that. movements. Yeah, yeah. She'd love that. Yeah. All right. More rising in just a minute. Please stay with us.